Hey, Lindsay, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great. Uh, are you happy happening. because you're in Tucson? Yes, I'm happy because I'm in Tucson. It's got sunny weather, dry pavement, so it's been treating me good so far. Because at home, you'd probably be snow shoveling right now, or yeah. is there any snow? <laughs> no, there's a lot of snow at home. I've been getting updates from the house sitter and friends at home, and it looks pretty snowy and white there. <laughs> um, so when you go to a trip like to Tucson, in this case, do you take Madison with you? Yes, our golden retriever's here. She's a snowbird as well, and I think she likes it. She gets to lay on the patio in the sun all day. That's excellent. So yeah. how do you decide on Tucson as like a escape from the harsh Montana winter? Yeah, uh, when I was in the university at Montana, we would drive 24 hours through the night uh, for our winter break. We had January, a January term, and so we drive down through the night to Tucson and we just come here for sort of warm weather training. And so I've been coming down here since maybe 2005 or six. And sometimes it's just for a couple of weeks. And then um, a few years ago, we came for a couple months and uh, worked out pretty nice for me. It definitely makes my job a lot easier um, than having to sort of ride the trainer every day or deal with the snow and the cold conditions of Montana. So I stay home until December, so I get to enjoy a little bit of winter in Montana, and then we sort of migrate south until uh, April 1st. Excellent. So um, how's the training going so far? Pretty good? Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I'll be honest. I take um, a pretty honest off-season, and it just, you know, I think it's individual for each person, but for me, I definitely take, you know, a good four to six weeks off, and so the first few weeks down here are always kind of rough, and um, kind of remind yourself of like, why did I take all that time off? But um, now it's kind of getting to the fun part where I'm seeing improvements every session and starting to get fit again and find my old form. So the last few weeks were a little rough, but now I'm starting to feel good. But a, a longer off season, I guess, really recharges your batteries as well to some degree, because if you, if it's really short, how can you really go at it full bore? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And I mean, I raced all the way till the end of November. So um, I don't feel too guilty about it and it's worked out well for me. You know, last year I did the same thing. I took four weeks basically all off, no structured training and, um, I don't know, it's a time to enjoy things in Montana that you don't get to enjoy other times of the year and, um, it definitely makes, like I said, the first few weeks back are, are rough and <laughs> your body hates you, but I think for longevity and my career and the sport, it, it works really well for, for me. Hey, I noticed actually during the off season, you made a really, really cool clock out of bike parts. Yes. Um, a, I didn't know you were an artist, and B, who was that clock for? <laughs> yeah, so we had um, uh, we have a triathlon party where we do sort of the gift exchange, and some people bring white elephant gifts, and some people bring nicer gifts, and you kind of don't really, you're not supposed to spend a lot of money on it, so I was trying to think of a good way to sort of make a recycled gift. Um, so I made the bike clock, and that was pretty cool. It's a good way to use spare parts that you have laying around. And we actually have a um, – it's called Free Cycles. It's a bike shop in Missoula where you can go and build bikes for free, and you can donate old parts. So I went there, and it's like going to a vintage store, and you got to dig through sort of all the different pieces they have and um, built a clock. So, And it was one of the first items to get stolen and frozen at the party. <laughs> and my friend Ryan is the proud owner. Excellent. So – now that you did such a good job with it, did you plan to make one for yourself as well? or? Yes, you... well, actually, I was afraid that it was going to not work, so I made two clocks. Uh, one was for myself, and it was a practice clock, and then I made the clock for the gift exchange. But uh, So it worked out well. So where's that clock hanging now in your house? Yeah, it's in the kitchen, so I'm never late. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So good, good to hear it works. Uh, in yeah. terms of your, your plans... I think I've seen that uh, San Juan 70.3 is next. Is that the case? Uh, yep. I'll be kicking off my season in San Juan. Um, I've thought about maybe jumping, literally jumping into Escape from Alcatraz, which is March 3rd. But um, for sure, you know, I think my first sort of A or big race that I'll be preparing for will be San Juan, March 17th. I think um, at least two years ago, I think you did Pucon. Yep. Um, but that's super, super early in the year. Uh, is that the reason why you have not done it this year or last year? 
Yeah, it's tough. You know, for three years, I think I went right in a row and I absolutely love that race and the experience is amazing, but it definitely is pretty early. And, um, I think I really love racing Ironman Arizona. And I think with our new point system, racing an Ironman after Kona works well for me. Um, so it's just really hard to race all the way through November and then turn around and go race in Pucon in early January. And it's a really tough course. I don't think you can show up there unprepared. You know, it's a definitely one of the hardest, uh, half Ironman run courses. So, um, I haven't been able to go. And every year when, uh, my friends are down there. You see the pictures from the race. I'm like, I got to go next year. I'm really missing out. But, um, you know, it makes for a long year to race January to November. So uh, maybe next year with some better planning, we can make it happen. Yeah, I think it, I think there's so many good races you may want to go to because they are interesting in terms of either the surroundings or uh, the people or whatever it may be or the challenges. But you can't be on every party and dance on every party. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, each year I sort of pick a new race that's sort of an adventure race or somewhere that's more, you know, exotic or somewhere different that I've never traveled to that um, is sort of a fun sort of holiday or vacation race. And so, you know, last year we tried San Juan. I'd never been there before and it was awesome. So I just, you know, I'm open minded. I like to try new things and that's perks of our job, I guess. Um, last year you also did Austria and won Ironman Austria. Yeah. Um, how do you like race? That was your first Ironman in Europe. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. No, it was awesome. I mean, it lived up to all the expectations and the hype that I'd heard about. Um, I really wanted to go race in Europe. And so I sort of asked around to a few other professionals, you know, what's your favorite Ironman? Or if I go race in Europe, which one should I do? And hands down, 100% of people were like, you have to go to Austria. You have to go to Austria. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a beautiful scenic backdrop for a race. And then the spectators are just, you know, supercharged and there's so many of them. And um, it's a really fun, fast course as well. And so um, I really enjoyed the experience. What about the post-race food? Did they have good post-race food there? <laughs> yeah, they uh, well, they have beer at the banquet, both before and after the race. So Chris and I like that. You get a big beer steins, <laughs> carbo loading. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, in terms of your longer races this summer, what's mm -hmm. on your schedule uh, leading up to Kona? Yeah, well, I, I think I'm going to do a pretty similar year to last year just because it worked out well for me and I liked it. Um, the first part of my year, I'll be focusing on the St. George, the U.S. Half Ironman Championships. So um, I've always... Uh, I actually used to go down to St. George and train during our spring break when I was on the university team. So I kind of wanted to do the Ironman there. I'm bummed that they took it away, but I'm excited to go do the half Ironman there. And then um, I'll be going back to San Juan uh, and then Honu again in Hawaii, the half Ironman. Uh, Boise, 70.3. And then I'm going to actually go back to Austria because it was so much fun. <laughs> and you're the defending champion. Yes. And actually this year, something cool. My parents are going to come. So that's pretty exciting that um, it's their 40th wedding anniversary. So they're going to come to Europe with us. Excellent. Uh, is it their first trip to Europe? No, they've been before. Yeah, they've been several times. But uh, I think we'll travel around with them after. And it's just an experience you don't get to have you know, all the time. So we're looking forward to a little vacation with your parents. I didn't know when hanging out with your parents could be cool, but it still is. <laughs> No, that's really that's actually a really nice thing. Um, in terms of just getting ready for Kona, you were eighth this in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I think you had a pretty smart race, but I think yeah. you know that more is still possible. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think my biggest challenge, and it sort of always has been, is my swim. And I think uh, it's been, I've been in the sport for a unique time where I sort of have seen this changing of the guard where, you know, when I first was in the sport, you could swim an hour and place in the top five at Ironman Hawaii. And just the women keep getting faster and faster and it's more competitive and you just can't do that anymore. And so the big focus for my year this year is just getting better at that swim and keep chipping away at it. Cause I think to be competitive and be a factor in Hawaii, I just need to get yeah, a little bit faster on my swim for sure. Um, I mean, I think I'm definitely a strong biker and I definitely have a great run, but if you're not in a position to utilize those particular at Ironman Hawaii, you know, you're working overtime and chasing kind of all day long. 
Do you think that is true in Hawaii more so because it's a big one lap swim or or just because or because of the competition in general or a combination of the two? Yeah, I think it's a combination. I mean, I definitely don't think the Ironman Hawaii swim is easy by any means. There's no wetsuit. And actually, that's fine with me. Like, I think I have a better feel for the water without a wetsuit on. But, you know, it's choppy. There's current. Um, I, I am a big fan of the women's only start. But now there's sort of less people for us to be swimming with. You know, there's only 30 women. Um, and then I think it's also more competitive. It's the world championship. So everyone there is in their best sort of form. And I've uh, I know that every year I've come out of the water at Hawaii and Chris and my coach are on the sidelines just shaking their head, <laughs> rubbing their foreheads, you know, knowing that I'm going to have to then be working overtime to sort of bridge a gap to get into the race. And, um, you know, last year I was really patient with myself and I don't think I um, went out too hard trying to close that gap because that's burned me in the past. But, you know, it's just a matter of like you're always kind of tinkering with the puzzle and trying to figure it out of you know, what's going to work for you. So definitely hoping to work on my swim. And I think, you know, I can get faster on the run as well. Um, mm. In terms of sponsors, is there anything new and exciting going on there? Or is it all nice and safe as it was? <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been, I've enjoyed working with uh, Trek Bikes was new last year. And so I'll keep working with them and they're awesome. And then I've been a long time sock and wear since 2007 uh, cliff bar. So pretty much everything's the same. Uh, I am excited. I'm working with cork power meters. And so that's pretty fun and, um, using the Garmin. And so that's been just only a couple weeks that I've had sort of access to their product. And so far I really like it. So you haven't been using a power meter until now? Uh, no, I'd been using the Cyclops power meter and then, um, I just wanted to work under the umbrella of SRAM. And so cork was an opportunity that came along and, um, I really like the product, and so it was a good fit. Excellent, excellent. Anything else we should know? Well, um, I've got two sort of <laughs> – Chris and I have picked up two things that we've really been excited about. Uh, one was when we went to Europe, we really fell in love with Vespa scooters. <laughs> so we got a scooter in the uh, summer after we came back from Europe, and we're really into driving the scooter around. <laughs> And uh, the other thing is um, I want to learn to play the guitar this year. So that's sort of my non-triathlon goal. Um, so I'm in the market for a left-handed guitar. Excellent. So we, we're going to be keeping an eye out for or an ear out for a concert of Lindsey Corbin later this year. Yeah, I got to have something to play around the campfire in Montana. <laughs> no, that sounds like the plan. Hey, Lindsey, thanks so much for the chat. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. Good luck to everyone in their seasons. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.